Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and for a change, I decided to go back into the studio for a little while. And I'm also going to kind of go back to my roots a little bit. Bob the Science Guy is primarily a science education channel, and one of the things that I look for is something that would be a good project for homeschoolers studying science, or people that are interested in how science is actually done. And one of the best ways to do that is show some of the mistakes that are being made. And that was one of the reasons that I got interested in the flat earth, because there's a lot of mistakes being made in the few observations that the flat earthers do. However, uh, when they do go out and make an interesting observation, I like to go ahead and have a look at it and see what I think. Let me show you one that I found recently on taboo conspiracy. Now, some of you may recall a couple of years ago, I measured the curve of the earth over the lake in my backyard using the surface of the lake as a 2,500 foot long water level. So here's Mr. Bear's equipment. He's got a nice survey stand, and then it looks like this might be a transit. And then on top of that, he has attached a rifle scope and it looks like he's got a little attachment for his uh, iPhone right here so he can film through the rifle scope. Now, I think that some fairness is called for here. When I did my observation of the curvature of the earth in the lake in my backyard, I used an auto level. Uh, it is a good tool, but it's not a perfect survey tool. Now, if I were to do that again, what I would use is something like this. This is a total station, and it's much more accurate. Um, Thanks to Baron Rutledge, my friend over on TikTok, for providing me with this. He sold it to me for a very good price, and I will be completing that deal very shortly. However, when I did my measurement of the distance to the sun, I used a nautical sextant taped to a camera stand to do it. And I got very good results within about 2%. And as a result, I'm going to cut him a little slack. I'm going to say that he's got this thing calibrated more or less properly, and it's accurate enough to be able to tell us what he's looking for. So the first thing that he did was basically just have a look around the beach. And uh, he has this thing set up. Uh, he claims that it's level. And his point is that he's looking at the tops of people's heads on the near beach. And he's also looking at the tops of people's head on the far beach. I don't really think that's true. Uh, I think that if you look at this individual right here, for example, who's near the water's edge, you'll see that that is pretty much at his head level, and that one is at the nose level. You're also seeing chin level right here, but let's go ahead and kind of give that to him. Let's just say, hey, we haven't ruled out the curve yet, but we haven't made it flat. Now, after looking around on the beach a little bit, he actually decided to do something that's a little bit more scientific. He got a couple of these large two by three foot cards, which are nicely visible. They're nice orange colors and he's got them on a stick, and he stuck the stick into the sand pretty much at the water's edge. Uh, that's close enough for me. Then he measured the distance from the top of that card down to the sand at 60 inches, and take his word for that. And that's not a far leap because he shows himself measuring some of these, and uh, I think he can probably do a pretty decent job with that. Now, another thing that he did was he used a good spherical model of the Earth, Google Earth, and took spherical Earth measurements using the Haversine formula, uh, noted what his location was, and then he noted the location of the two markers at 0 0.8 and 3.1 miles. I think he did a good job with that. Now, let's revisit my curvature of the Earth experiment in the backyard of my house. So, we've got a lake that's 2,552 feet long. And we've got an auto level, which is calibrated to the height of the auto level above the surface of the lake, uh, is marked on both sides, and then that was transferred to a telephone pole on the other side of the lake. Uh, I surveyed it here, and I surveyed it on the other side. The point that I was making is that on a flat earth, the mark on the telephone pole would line up. On a curved earth, like so, the mark on the telephone pole would be lower than the level of the transit. And when we went ahead and did the observation, lo and behold, the crosshairs of the auto level were the predicted two inches above the marker on the phone pole and the top of the telephone box. 
This confirmed curvature of the Earth at 8 inches per mile squared, because over half a mile, we should have 2 inches of curvature. Now, Mr. Baer did something very similar, and I will allow him to explain his own method. Okay, so let's do the math here. The top one is a flat Earth model, and you just line up the flags, and you're done. Makes a ton of sense, especially after the observations, too. Uh, the round Earth model, here's the math of, of a globe that we supposedly live on, and uh, this is the math calculations that they give us. So, uh, okay, so at 0.8 miles, it should be 5.1 inches of drop. And over here at 3.1 miles, it should be 70, 70, uh, 76.9 inches of drop. Okay, so now if we take the scope and line it up on the first flag, that means down here, we should have, you take the 5.1, you times it by 3.1. And you get 16 inches of drop. So if you take 16 off of 76.9, there's still there should be 61 inches of air above this uh, marker, but we don't see that. So it doesn't it doesn't match the globe. Okay, so we have a couple of minor problems so far. Uh, basically, I went through his math. That's that's more or less correct. I'm fine with that. However, he's tilting the transit down to line up with the top of the near card at 0.8 miles. What does that do to the gap that you would anticipate on a globe at the 3.1 mile card? It reduces it by 16 inches. Why not make the transit plumb, in other words, horizontal, and then measure the distance above the near card and measure the distance above the far card? That would give you much better data in order to come to a conclusion. However, there's another issue that we're gonna run into, and that's refraction. Now, Mr. Baird did go through the effort of getting the ambient temperature and the water temperature that day. It was 75 degrees for the air and 65 degrees for the water. That's something you don't normally see. I applaud him for doing it. However, he then goes on to talk about refraction and then simply say that refraction is used to make the globe what it is. He didn't even bother calculating the refraction. But let's go ahead and have a look at Walter Bislin's advanced earth curve calculator and see what refraction should have been for this observation. Okay, so here's Walter Bislin's advanced earth curve calculator. Uh, this is the one that I like to use. It's very well done. Uh, your observer height is five feet. Your target size is five feet, and those match with his measurements, and the distance is 3.1 miles. I'm fine with that. Now, if you come down here, how much drop should there be? 6.4 feet. And 6.4 feet is roughly 78 inches. However, that's with zero refraction. Let's just put in standard refraction. Uh, which is very reasonable for this observation. Now we have a drop of 5.3 feet. We're well over a foot higher due to refraction. So that means that the observation will show the object to be uh, at least a foot higher than what his calculations show. Plus he's also got the 16 inches that he took off the top because he tilted the transit down to line up with the top of the card at 0.8 miles. Again, that's why I would do this from the horizontal, not from lining it up with the near card. However, there's another problem. Was the measurement done correctly and truthfully? Let's have a look. Now the blue line here would be the horizontal measurement. So at 0.8 miles, we would have 5.1 inch drop. And at 3.1 miles, we'll have 76.9 inches drop, which matches what Walter Bislin says. And what he claimed that he was going to do is he was going to line his transit up with the top of this near card. And as you see, that's where the 16 inches is lost here, plus over a foot from refraction on the other side. So that's 32 inches of missing curvature right there. But what happens instead if he lines his transit up not on the top corner of this card, but on the top corner of that card. What would happen as he looked at this near card? It would be down probably several inches. Now let's see what he actually did. Did he initially line it up with the top of the near card or was it below the top of the near card and he bumped it up a little bit to make it line up and then as he brought it to the far card, he let it come back down. Let's see what he did. Of course the wind spun the first marker around so it's not red. We lined up the corner, and it lines right up. I don't know about you, but two observations in a row, 
The marker lines right up. I find that fascinating. Actually, Mr. Bear, the term is interesting. But let's go back and look and see what you did. We're going to back this up just a little bit and look at it kind of frame by frame. So let's back this up some to the first marker. So it's not red. Where's that marker? Now let's look at that very carefully. Is that dot at the crosshairs lined up with the top of that marker? It most definitely is not. But let's see how he changes that before he goes to the next marker. I'm going to go ahead and advance this frame by frame. Look what he does. We line up the. Did you see what he did there? He raised the transit until it just hit the marker and then immediately moved it off. Let's watch again. Around so it's not red. We lined up the corner so it's not red. We line up the corner. Now that is a little bit of a problem because it looks like he lined it up with the far marker and then checked the near marker, fudging it a little bit. Let's go ahead and have a look and see how far his transit is tilted downward. So in this case, he's got the sight lined up at the top of the card that his wife is holding when I believe she's 3.1 miles away. She might even be a little further. Now both the transit and the top of the card are at five feet, 60 inches. I want you to use that measurement, 60 inches, to estimate the height of the fisherman in the hat that you're going to see in a second. The one that is relatively close to the transit. My wife is holding this marker. I also think it's very interesting that the bottom of those buildings at the far end are cut off compared to the near end. It's almost as though the earth is curved. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping back. Uh, I will be having a little bit of fun with uh, some of these videos in the next couple of weeks and going over all 15 experiments done during the final experiment down in Antarctica. I hope you'll uh, drop me a like and a subscribe, maybe have a look at that telescope fund, and see you again soon.